dinner party wars. Don't point that thing at me. You're a traitor. Three couples set out to destroy the competition. Oh, for the heads! With the ultimate dinner party. What is that? Look at what the Two experts judge their dinner dues. I have party gifts. Oh, very much. That's awesome. And don'ts. That is the most inappropriate, most uncomfortable moment of my entire dining life. Tensions run high. Come on, come on, come on. As each couple competes to be dinner party war champions. Oh, get it out on the table. first couple practice meals on their church group while arguing in the kitchen. Social work project coordinator Marsha and general contractor Brian. He hates vegetables? No. Well, me, I, okay. I, I can't say that I actually hate vegetables, just there's a lot of vegetables not on my list. I Check that the out. The menu selection that we have, we haven't made any of those things before, so it's, it's going to be very exciting. And we've got a leg up on the competition. Second up are triathletes, house music DJs, and dinner party aficionados, Sue, a retired exec, and Michael, a software developer. We've had a fairly thorough training regimen. We've done every dish more than once. We're kind of fussy about wines. It's very good now that it's breathed a bit. Wine is always a big part of it, and that helps loosen up the guests anyway. And we're the perfect pair to win this competition. Our last couple, marketing project manager Anne and ad man Ryan, hope their six years together as a dinner party duo will bring the competition to its knees. Booze is a food group. Someone came over and hated vegetables. Um, they would probably have a pretty hard time at my place. Yes, ma'am. If I knew in advance, I would plan around that somehow. Would you really? No. The competition's going down because no one has fun in the kitchen like us. These couples will meet for the first time when they host each other over the course of three competitive dinners. They each get $350 to spend and three hours to deliver the ultimate dinner party. Only one couple can win, and that's up to our judges. Order up. This is Corbin Tomaszewski, executive chef and kitchen supremo at Shishi Holt Renfrew Cafe. He'll be judging the couples on menu selection, food presentation, and of course, taste. And this is Anthea Turner, the UK's perfect housewife, top-selling author, and our ultimate party hostess. She'll be judging the dinner parties on style, etiquette, and entertainment. They'll view each saucy detail using robot cameras. At stake, $1,000 of kitchen goodies and the grand honor to be named Dinner Party War Champions. It's day one of our three dinner blitzkrieg, and first into battle are Marsha and Brian. The judges are visiting them to check out their plans. Their theme is spring, and for them, that means a lot of food. First up, an appetizer of spicy shrimp salad with mango chutney a second course of California salad with a chilled green pea soup, two main courses, halibut with pumpkin rice and carrots, and veal chop with asparagus, and finally, strawberry cheesecake for dessert. Hello, Hello. Hey. Nice Welcome. to see you. Welcome. Nice to see you too. A lot of the items on the menu we haven't made before, so it's going to be, oh, we haven't, oh, all of, we have oh, never oh. done before. Follow but are the plan. ingredients you've worked with before, it's just not the recipe? Exactly. Okay, exactly. so that's not as bad. Now, you've actually got the perfect scenario here. Open plan living is great, but the downside is you've got to be so organized because everybody can see you. Now, obviously, because you have a vegetarian attending your, your dinner party tonight, you're going to pay close attention to what they're going to eat. Absolutely. Um, so what we've done is included a fish option. The only tip I'm going to give you is buy fish on Monday. Fish on Monday is fish from Friday, Friday. Saturday, Sunday. Fresh, fresh fish. fish. And everything else will fall. Fresh, fresh fish. And I'll know when I taste it if it's fresh or not. 
I just noticed on the table those beautiful butterflies. I handmade the napkin ring holders. Mm -hmm. I love detail, I love color. Plus, we had a budget. We'll, Excuse we'll, me. We'll have to make a smaller one for Corbin to wear on his finger. She spent a lot of time making it. I know, I, I think did. the did. I appreciate it. I did. I think you yeah. really yeah. thought about everything. Marsha and Brian spring into action, but will their party take flight? A little concerned that they haven't actually cooked these recipes before, but they are familiar with the ingredients. I love the fact that she was up with a glue gun and all her butterflies and, you know, the little menu. It's so well thought out. Yeah, yeah. Detail, detail, detail. Detail. Okay, I'm tasting it. I'm so consumed here. Mmm. Hey! <laughs> and the war begins. Come on, come on, come on, come on. While the hosts prep, the robot cameras are set to record the dinner table action. And then it's private access only in the confessional camp, where the evening sins are truly revealed. Ah! Disaster! Meanwhile, Marsha and Brian's late prep of their spicy mango shrimp appetizer is raising tensions as zero hour approaches. The pressure's getting to them now. You can just feel this tension now. Clear up as you go along. Clear, 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 confidently. Do you know what I would have done in the situation? I would have moved everything even off that shelf by the window. I would have used all the space. The dancers are late. They're supposed to be here at four. Uh, dancers? Quickly, please, you're late. I don't like tardiness, and that too shall pass. You guys need to get outside now. Now, now, now. Outside, outside, now. I love her. <laughs> get outside now. And just in time, too, as the dancers get in place to greet our first couple, Sue and Michael. Okay, okay. and you're AB. AB. AB, hi. Camila. I'm Sue. Good to meet you. That was a little bit odd, wasn't it? Because actually, I think Mike thought that they were Marsha and Brian. Please come on in. Oh, it's uh, like the tropics. <laughs> <laughs> come on in, please. I won't need my seat. coat. Dinner party do. Immediately upon entering someone's home, criticize. We may not need that. <laughs> so did you deliberately crank the heat up, or is that the? <laughs> We're trying to make it as tropical yeah, as possible, and unfortunately, we don't have central air. This is always the most difficult bit of a dinner party, isn't it? Especially when you're giving up a dinner party to people you don't know. Have they been offered a drink? There are no drinks in hand. No, no I don't think anything's even been offered. Meanwhile, Ryan and Anne are wondering if they're at the right house. Are we coming right in? <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, very nice. Just keep walking. Lovely. Just, Just keep, keep walking. walking. Just... Pretend you haven't seen them. We don't know what's going on. Ryan, Ryan. I'm sorry. Ryan, Ryan. Ryan. Okay. Okay. and Ryan. Marsha? Anne. Anne. Marsha. So come on. So who are, yeah, who are these yeah. folks? Marsha and her dancers get this party started with some salsa. That's not. Are we going? Are we gonna? Look, it is working now. This is good. She's yeah, bringing it together now. now. It's kind of making sense. Yeah. I think every party should start with a pre-alcohol dance. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just to warm up the blood. No dancing for you, Brian. For you, only work. Hey, yeah, Brian, we're, yeah. Us. we're having a party. You guys did amazingly. Oh, yeah. So now <laughs> you are able to have some wine. Come oh, on in. OK, now we're allowed. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Get that woman a drink. Please welcome. Come on in, have a seat. Oh, that was amazing. Thank yeah, that's you. That's very nice. Brian here. He has not been in conversing with any of the guests. No, he hasn't, but somebody's got to do the cooking. Marsha and Brian finally slake the thirst of their dehydrated guests. Everybody would like some wine? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. definitely. Are you guys going to do a little toast with us, or should we just ah, do our own? That's a great or... thing. Let's that. That's okay. a great idea. That's a nice way to get everybody together. It's just a pity that it had to come from Susan. It should have come from Marsha. With only three hours to deliver the perfect dinner party, Marsha doesn't waste any time getting her apps out. You know those wrappers you make spring rolls out of? Yeah. She's taken them and done like a little muffin tin. Yeah. You put it in, you just uh -huh. bake it in the oven. Yeah. To start our evening, we have shrimp with a mango chutney. So bon appetit. Thank okay, you. we'll just dive in. <laughs> a little bit spicy, very nice. Let's hear what the judges think. Hot bit. Not too spicy, though. It's really good. To be honest, it's tasty, but it's a little awkward to eat. Yeah. You know what I would do? I would just take a beautiful little 
baby pizza of lettuce or something and just put it in there and forget about all this cracker mm -hmm. stuff. You know, I could do without the cracker. Just do that. So, the shrimp mango chutney is a hit. Well, for everyone who's eaten it. Is one of you vegetarian? Uh, I'll eat calamari and on occasion mussels. Okay. How about scallops? Do you eat scallops? Actually, yes, sorry, forgot that one. I did have a recipe um, that was completely vegetarian and I took it off because I ha we had the halibut. Yeah, we I had don't eat Oh, you don't eat, eat fish. I okay. don't, don't eat, eat fish. fish. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we, we what is that here. you have over there that looks... <laughs> That's not fish. fish, is it? Yes, it is. I <laughs> do have a that. vegetarian dish for you. Oh, okay, wonderful. Okay, I do. Marsha has been fantastic here. This is an absolute nightmare. Anne is a vegetarian, but she says she eats some fish. And of course, the fish that she doesn't eat is the one that Marsha is serving. Thank goodness she had such an eclectic menu. And the clock is ticking. One hour has gone by. Oh, seven o'clock, eh? Just making the salad right now, and then we can have the first entree. Mm -hmm. You actually shouldn't be reading your recipe, and you should have practiced this. She's making the salad dressing now. She could have made that salad dressing yeah. yesterday. Like, she's wasting time. Let's hear what Anne has to say in the confessional. Marsh and Brian are off in the kitchen cooking, so not really taking part of the conversation, which is a bit odd. It is a bit strange that there seems to be so much prep still going on, even though we're here. I don't see a lot of wine refilling, though. All right, let's see what Sue has got to say now. It has gone on a fair length of time with only one glass of wine, so Michael and I would be much more comfortable if we could have had a couple more glasses by now. After some lengthy prep, the first course is served. So I just wanted to say we are Christians, so we pray. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful meal. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to break bread. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Did, did you happen to see Ryan's face when they were praying? Yeah, he had that sort of... Um... You don't make somebody pray at a dinner table, especially when you don't know their race, religion, background, or status as a wicked atheist. Uh, that is the most inappropriate, most uncomfortable moment of my entire dining life. This is like a nice... It's different. Well, at least Ryan likes the soup. Here's the first course. Chilled green pea soup with a California-style salad. It's too soggy for my taste. What she could have done is just taken fresh, beautiful slices of avocado, yeah. put the pepper on top, mm -hmm. and then drizzle a little bit of the dressing yeah. just before it goes out and done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's try okay. the soup. The flavor's amazing. Yeah, the flavors. There's fabulous flavors in it. No, it's good. Yeah. And it's back to the pressure cooker as Marsha and Brian abandon their guests again to prep main course number one. They're late, they're late. And they're not even sitting with their guests having the first course. It's like they're going back to the waiter and the cook. And they're not gonna sit down now, are they? No. Mike is in the confessional. The vibe in the kitchen would be like in a Manhattan eatery on a Friday night or something like that, in that from the moment we came in, they were working like dogs. So it's two hours and 15 minutes into the night, and the first main has just been served. And there's still another main of veal and dessert to come. It's a pan-seared halibut, a slightly spicy pumpkin rice. Very nice. Oh, this is beautiful. It's got some great color in it. And here it is, pan-seared halibut with pumpkin rice. And for Anne, curried potatoes with spinach. Presentation-wise, it's a little eh. Moist. You know how fish can be drier than Yeah. No, there was a vegetarian option. The halibut oh. with this oh. would have been phenomenal. So the combination now. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Perfect. Now that's island cooking. Mm. The first main is out, and Brian can relax for a minute or two. Oh, excuse me, Brian. Can I see you for a sec? <laughs> I think we need to cancel the veal and move into the dessert. That's what we have to do. OK. Marsha and Brian have cut loose the veal, but will such a drastic measure cost them? They have made the right decision. They would have ran out of time, and they Absolutely. would have lost a lot of points. But you have to remember, they're still going to lose points for not executing the full menu. Yeah. Knowing they have to pick up the pace to keep within the dinner party's three-hour time limit, Marsha and Brian launch into dessert. We're all here for my first cheesecake. We're there for your first <laughs> cheesecake? <laughs> Very nice. It's really creamy and delicious. There's too much graham crackers. That's all I taste. This is what I don't like. It's 
like somebody had a bloody nose and it dripped around the outside of the plate. That's what that looks like. And before their forks can clatter on their dessert plates, everyone is whisked out the door, but not without a whiff of spring. It's springtime, so oh, I wanted wow. you to have a bottle of water. Thank you so much. And for Very gardening, nice. there are peas. I love parting gifts. I know you do. <laughs> the thing is, when we met them this morning, they were so nice. And what is so sad is that these people that have come into their home haven't experienced that. They have not seen the, the, the personalized side. No. Thank you. Good night. Wow, Brian. That was schooling. How do you feel about the party? Oh, we could have used maybe a touch more wine. I really didn't get to see a lot of the two of them, mm -hmm. um, which was a little unfortunate because they're wonderful people. We got to know the other couple really well, but the hosts, unfortunately, were in the kitchen all the time. So that's something that actually we know when we have a dinner yeah. party. One of us has to stay out and entertain while the other one is in the kitchen. So we've got to make sure that we do that this time as well. Day two, dinner party two, and our judges pop in to check out Sue and Michael's chic supper club theme. Come on, Welcome in. Home. Come on in. They plan to impress with appetizers of mini paninis, a first course of scallops with a caper raisin sauce and arugula salad, a main course of Alaskan black cod, fregula, and spring vegetables in a faux veal sauce, and a dessert of fruits in a warm apricot and Grand Marnier reduction with whipped cream. To make it fun, we're going to have a little wine contest. So I know that we have some guests who aren't really wine drinkers, as, as we recently discovered, or don't drink at all. We hope a lot of it will be in discussion of the flavors and the tastes and the wine and getting to know each other. You do look very organized. Of course, the thing is, to drink a wine tasting, you've got to have lots and lots of glasses. And you know when you rent them and you, can, you send them back, it will send them back yeah. dirty, and they just yeah. go into a crate and somebody and comes and picks them, them up? Yeah. How much do we love that? <laughs> just in case somebody said anything, well, mine is great, but to me, <laughs> it's for picnics. Okay. All right. All right. And I'm going to go straight to the black cod. Okay. I don't get why you would call it faux veal. If you're going to put chicken stock in it, why not just put a veal stock in it? Because I don't eat veal or veal stock, but I do eat yeah, but, chicken stock. No, on I'm... my menu, I'd never say faux veal, but you know. Okay. Who the hell am I? We're different. My tip would be be prepared to defend the faux veal sauce okay. because people are going to go. Okay. <laughs> so, what did you think? I'm a little annoyed with the faux veal thing. That's really got to you, hasn't it? Well, because it doesn't make any sense. I can't wait for that meal to come through to us and you try it. So much time, we were ready an hour ago. Don't say that, we're still doing stuff. I guess we're eating. Well then, I guess everybody else should just go home. The war has been won. The judges are now in place, so bring on the faux follies. They are incredibly organized. They're all they're waiting for the guests. Can I just tell you that the arrangement is too high for a table. And also, she hasn't cut any of the leaves off. That doesn't look very nice. Hello! Hey. 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 Long time no see. You're looking very you sharp. My favorite color. <laughs> it's a wine, so we know that's kind of your thing. So. You look lovely. Thank you. Oh, you look gorgeous. Oh, thank you. How Good are you? Good to see you. Look you heard I like thank Italian you. wine somehow. Very delicious. <laughs> it's always tough when people say they love wine and then you have to pick one up. Some people have very finicky tastes in wine. People yeah. like wine. You just go to the, uh, your liquor store and you ask the guy. Always ask. Tonight we're going to do a wine contest, but we give you uh, multiple choice for each one. For the light drinkers, uh, we have a bucket yeah. that you can throw it in the bucket. Right. There's quite a lot of pressure in this, really, isn't there? It can be very belittling mm -hmm. if your, your knowledge is limited. All right, now I'm really interested in knowing what Brian's got to say. The wine thing, yeah, it did start me out a little bit uncomfortable because I thought it was about food and dinner. And to assume that everybody drinks is a little bit of a push. To not inquire with your guests that you know, alcohol may not be an option for you. He is so uncomfortable, and it's because of the whole wine tasting. I'm gonna get started over here. I don't know if a panini is the type of hors d'oeuvre you would serve at a dinner party like this. This side here is the goat's cheese and the chutney, mm -hmm. and this side is the smoked cheddar with the roasted red pepper. Now, they're gonna be messy, do you know what I mean? Whoops. <laughs> The rule is, is if you're drinking wine, it's a cocktail. It's yeah. so you have a glass of wine in one hand and something small to put in the other. That's yeah. it. You just gotta hold, get your nappy underneath there. And... The chutney's amazing. Smoked cheddar. Yeah. 
and roasted red pepper. Mm, it's nice. Mm, we've got in this one. Grandpa chutney and apricots. Mm, I like this one. Oh, I like this one too. That's tickling my taste buds. Out of the kitchen and into the supper club. Michael and Sue's guests fend for themselves while the hosts fuss over the apps. This needs to be heated up. That pan is not hot enough for those scallops. No. It's got too many in the pan too, and you should always dry them. Yeah, yeah. Another quick tip, chicken, any type of meat, any type of uh, fish, mm. usually pat it dry. Meanwhile, Ryan entertains. It's always the new best. It's the problem you have. And then I taste it, I go, that's the new best jerk yeah. pork I've ever had. What Ryan does is he does a lot of talking, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't ask questions, like I'm interested in you underneath it all. Well, there's a I difference try... between listening and understanding. Yeah. Ryan just... Yeah. The green one is a caper raisin sauce. So it's, it's very simple. It's golden raisins, capers, and we add uh, sherry vinegar. How long does it take to plate six this hours? Is, yeah, this is very safe. Big no-no. Quite often you see foodies do this. They try too hard. Take now it's, they're starting to do some sort of seahorse poo squiggle. Seahorse poo. Delightful. Thank you. The first course is served. Scallops and caper raisin sauce paired with a salad. I loves me a good scallop. Marsha's going up to the confessional. I did eat one scallop, but it definitely was not good for me. I like scallops. A little bit more crispy. Let's see if the judges agree. The scallop is beautiful and tender. Absolutely love them. But you know what the scallop is missing? That crust, that sear. It's tender in the middle. Beautiful it's a little, scallop, it's, lovely scallop. I just think the sauce is a bit too grunny. Apart from it looks like something that my cat has done. I love this salad. Mm. The sesame in there is yeah. perfect. And in a shocking turn of events, Brian has boldly gone where he has never gone before. No, I can't believe this. You're actually having salad? <laughs> you can't get them to at your house? You don't eat salad you at all. Arugula is really expensive. If I find the right chicken stuff. sandwich, I'll put a piece of lettuce on don't it. Don't point that thing at me. <laughs> You're a traitor. Down. He's not a traitor. He's a traitor. That's a delicious he, salad. He it's, a different, it's a different leaf. Sorry. Oh, the bucket, yes. I'll do, I'll the, do it. For the bucketeers. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha, what do you think of this one? So an interesting thing you can do. Michael, you did you let me answer, let them answer the question. Wine hog. Totally. <laughs> um, it kind of reminds me of um, rubbing alcohol. It really yeah. does. Marsha's going up to the confessional. Do you think she's a little bit tipsy? I am a little bit tipsy from the wine. Um, I usually don't drink this much. And I'm um, a little bit turned off by the spit bucket. I'm not sure if having a spit bucket in the middle of a dining room table makes for um, good digestion. With all the wine Marsha's testing, how is she doing in the game? Everyone has made their choices for the last wine. Yes. Uh, two of you got it right, exactly right. It is a Riesling. Oh. Ryan and Anne both got Austria Riesling. Riesling. And these guys both went Sauvignon Blanc, New Zealand. Very frustrating, believe me. You see, with every question, Marsha and Brian are being made to feel more and more uncomfortable. I, I hate this, it's making my skin crawl. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen. Oh, we're doing good. We're laughing. If by laughing you mean late, then yes, you're laughing. I'll get you to do the sauce. It does look very nice. Well, let's, let's get it out. This it's is only, six, it's six plates. plates. There's two of them here, they're fussing, they're with the fleur de sel and then a pepper, and it's like, you know what? Just put the food in the plate and serve it. Yeah. Oh, get it out on the table! Will their Chi Chi Supper Club theme lead them into an unfashionable finish? We got the Alaskan black cod, which is roasted, and it was marinated in some sake and some uh, soy sauce. Can Sue talk about anything else other than food? It is feeling like a food and wine lecture. Dig in, dig in, because oh, pretty soon I'll be giving you dessert. <laughs> Whether you're ready for it or not. <laughs> and here's the main. Alaskan black cod in a faux veal sauce with vegetables and a Sardinian pasta called fregula. And for Anne, fregula. OK, come on, open this. Let's have a look. Have wow. Mm. That fish. 
That is superb. Magnifico. This base here, so simple. It's I good. love it. It's not veal. No. It's chicken. But it's very good. I have to eat more. Let me just try the vegetarian. There you This is what Anne, who has already stated that she's quite hungry, is eating. Needs a little faux. <laughs> I think Anne can't have it. Anne's not here. And what did Anne think of her fregula without fish and without faux veal? So I thought maybe there'd be something a little more adventurous. It was kind of dry and maybe a little undercooked. So not quite what I was expecting just yet. Okay, everyone, I hate to, I hate to rush you, but we have nine minutes. The three hour dinner party is almost up and Michael and Sue hurry to serve their classy supper club dessert. No name, we won't look at it. What is that? that? What the yes, hell? No. But it is real whipped cream. That is a horrible crime! That is so wrong. That is not whipped cream. They should have just done a little quenelle or a little oh. spoonful of creme fraiche. Oh. With seconds left in the party, the guests and the judges scarf down the dessert of fruits in a warm apricot and Grand Marnier reduction served with real whipped cream. Got to be quick, got to hurry up. This dinner party's nearly over. Got seconds on the clock now. That apricot is delicious. Absolutely gorgeous apricot. I only wish... That syrup, beautiful. There wasn't the squirty stuff on it. And as they're being rushed out the door, one last bit of business. Who's the winner? Is it four Anne? Four points total. Anne is the yeah. winner. I got four. Really? Oh, you got four as well. <gasps> so the gift goes to Ryan and Anne. Do you know what I do? I think you should give it to Marsha and Brian. I would give them each a bottle. That's what I would do. Cheers! Cheers. And we're off to number three. It's war. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the best kind of war. Three hours is a long time. Three minutes over. Three we minutes gave over. them extra time. Three minutes over. That's a penalty. It is a penalty. It was a little bit of a wine lecture. How did you feel about that? Uh, it kind of took a, a good portion of the focus off food. Mm -hmm. and kind of directed it towards wine, busy trying to figure out what the next wine is about. There were parts of it I was kind of sadsies. Sadsies? Well, it was sadsies. It was the kind of wrong Asian inspired. What are you gonna do to win this competition? She has been planning. There have been late nights, there have been things written down, things scratched out. My hand has not got any blue or any ink on it. Last up is Ryan and Anne with their theme. Old World Victorian. They'll have appetizers of spiced nuts, candied orange peel, and olives, a first course of tomato consomme, a second course of tea sandwiches, and a main course of spinach salad and cheese phyllo bundles. All this followed by dessert, assorted homemade cakes and candy. Our judges are here to get the scoop. The last one. Yes. Since it is tea party theme, we've got an assortment of little open face sandwiches we're gonna do. Right. Um, but no meat course. There's some meats in the sandwiches. Yeah. And that's why we tried that to include a number numbers. of courses so that by yeah. the end you've had a, a, a good enough meal. I, I honestly I would never have thought of doing a, a tea or a high tea at night. Uh -huh. And it's all about the finishing details with tea sandwiches. And the bread can't be dry. Nothing worse than dry sandwiches for tea sandwiches. I want total modern high tea, but at dinner. So it's quite a modern environment, yes. isn't it, this? Sorry, what's for dessert? There's an assortment of things that have been made. There's some tea-infused truffles, some saffron pistachio cookies. Are you making all the desserts? Yes. 100%. I don't think do you're you... doing it. Do you want it? Do you want to see? I'm totally looking in the fridge. Consomme is going. Yeah. On the... And uh, there's oh, a no, few actually, these look taste homemade. one, if you'd like. There's... <laughs> He's not going to say no to that, I don't think. You want to try one? No, because they're going to need them for the dinner party. You want to put that one back? No, I'll try yours. <laughs> I know that the modern way is the best, but sometimes, in certain instances, old and new do marry very well. Yeah. And I'm just looking in here, and that there is nothing wrong with cleaning up some of this okay. and using it. Any of these things. Mm -hmm. I think they're nice. I think what it will do is it will just give another layer, a bit more depth to the table. In fact, I love that idea. Don't make it too clinical. And save room for dessert. Oh, listen, don't you worry, I... For dessert. All those yeah. homemade desserts. <laughs> he has made them. Come on, you're just winding them up now. I didn't want to be too hard on them about the concept because I think they need all the confidence that they can get to carry right. this through tonight. What could pull them ahead... Yeah? Is the, ..is the fact that she's made all the sweets from scratch. Oh, yeah. And that the food, if it's going to be presented the right way... Mm -hmm. ..a little bit different from high tea, and the flavour's there.
with one party to go. Anne and Ryan attempt to top all the rest with lots and lots and lots of tiny little sandwiches. The bread is stale. The bread was a really like long thing, so we did it early. Unfortunately, it means it's not quite as fresh tasting as we would love. Corbin had commented on earlier that it might be an issue, and it is, so. So these are now not sandwiches, these are little toasty things. It does annoy me that they've purposely toasted the bread. You said don't do it. I'm seriously considering going to get more bread. I gotta be here when they get here, so. It's not gonna, do you even know if that place is open? No, should I just give up on it? Yeah. Okay, sorry, no, I'm just, we made a mistake and. It happens. Now we're gonna deal with it. This is me relaxing again, here we go. This tea party looks like it's running out of steam. Lucy! Look at you! Thank you, check out the shoes. I know, this is like. Look at those shoes! You have some competition tonight. I think I do. Do you guys want a glass of water? We have like a fresh cucumber water that you might like. Sure. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you so okay. much. Vegetables and water? Yeah, it's good for you. Who would have known? How's Welcome, going, friends. Wow, nice place. You're looking very elegant. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. Our inspiration for the meal was sort of a Victorian tea party. Yeah. So this is candied lemon and orange peel. These are spiced nuts. What do the judges think of Anne's homemade spice nuts and candied peel? Mm, these are gorgeous. Just got a little bit of heat in there. I think there's a little cayenne, maybe. Maybe some allspice. They're nice. The canapé is a success, and with Ryan entertaining, Anne disappears into the kitchen to make the consomme. Anne, we're not hearing from you. What's happening? <laughs> I am plating the first course. Oh, I was supposed okay. to be distracting you while that was happening. Sorry, yeah. I did a terrible job. <laughs> now, with this tomato consomme, it's a chilled soup. It looks a little pale. Do you think Brian's going to like this course? No, I don't think Brian's going to like any of this. Brian will be the pizzeria at the end of the road. If you look under your plate, what this is, it's been pulled from an old etiquette book. If you happen to catch someone who is breaking said etiquette rule a during the course of rule. dinner, okay. you can okay. point it out to them. Oh, thank you. Beautiful. Sorry, Sue, you've broken the etiquette rule. I'm not allowed to say that it's nice. Never remark upon what is placed before you, either in praise or dispraise. You're kidding. Imagine if you went to a party and nobody ever said that oh, something yeah. looked nice or tasted good. Especially if you love talking about food. Right, Sue? What we have here is a tomato consomme, um, which is essentially al almost like the extract. So you let it's it- like tomato water? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, this is like a spring soup, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. It's very tasty. Very nice, very nice. And here is the tomato consomme, or as Michael called it, tomato water. Ah! I would have liked the color to be a little more pink, a little more red. It would have been quite nice to have been in something you could have just drunk. Or you just put it in a big dish and you freeze it and you just take a fork and you grate it, grate it, grate it. And you can make like a savory sorbet kind of thing and you yeah. can use it as a palate cleanser. What does Brian think? It doesn't seem like they're willing to feed us tonight, or at least me. The next course is uh, some nice small open face sandwiches, which is why I'm in here assembling everything. Otherwise, I'd be out there with you guys. And what's Ryan doing? He's doing what he does best. Wow! Perfect. And I, I also asked them, I said, I'd like to see it really contemporary and really modern and really yeah. cool. It looks a bit 18th century, if you ask me. Oh, wow. We're an hour and a half in, and the sandwiches are finally delivered. We've got some open face sandwiches. We wanted to give them, you know, something a little different than just the typical cucumber sandwich. Very nice. Is it us, or does Marshall look confused at the first course? You didn't have this, did you, Marsh? No. Have one of these? I'm not feeling nuts. Mm, I like it. I'm glad you're into toast because it was a little oh, yeah. first, so this is, that makes me happy. I'm all about country. Yeah. That looks like dog poo. I don't think it is dog poo. Listen to this. <laughs> These are croutons with topping. I think I'm bleeding. <laughs> so I think we'll, uh, we'll sit and digest a little bit while the other one heats up. <laughs> Digest what? Wow. Just don't fall asleep. It's a relaxing <laughs> evening. Even Sue finds this party lacking. I'm a bit hungry. <laughs> People are hungry, they want food, and so they're a little bit less energetic as a result. Brian looks bored and hungry. 
Look, look who's there. Come on, Masha. I am feeling a little bit bored because it's a dinner party. The theme kind of clashes with what needs to happen for a dinner party. Maybe Marsha can get the party started. Almost the same dog after all. Get your hand off my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Little romance. I know what you're reaching for. But maybe I like your nuts. Maybe oh. you do. Oh. Romance. How much white wine have you had? <laughs> all right, Marsha and Brian. But they had promised that Liberace wasn't here to perform. He was just having a delightful night at the Tropicana for his birthday. <laughs> and back to boring. What is that? A bunch of green beans on a wilty salad. Strawberries and beans. Like, what the, weird. What the weird frick character. is that? Well, you could put beans in a salad. Not strawberries and but beans. But not strawberries. I'm getting annoyed. Anne is serving the main. At least she calls it the main. The rest of us call it brunch. Salad with spinach and cheese phyllo bundles. Brian looks like he's going to faint. I can have more strawberries. We have more. Yeah. Unless, unless, no, well, everybody enjoy first, because I still have. And by more strawberries, Brian means more steak. Or any steak. If we've had a main, I'm terribly upset. Look at the puff pastry here. I'm just yeah, gonna scrape away. It. What is that? That's not puffed. That is it's raw. Unpuffed. Ill puffed. It should have been blind baked before. Yeah. Then you put your ricotta and then you, you just it flash on. it in the oven. Yeah. <sighs> on this episode of Dinner Party Wars, we've had some Irie food. Now that's island cooking. Some fussy food. Oh, get it out on the table! And some anemic food. That soup looks a little pale. Up for grabs is $1,000 worth of kitchen goodies and the title of Dinner Party War Champions. It's Ryan and Ann's to win, but will their tea party woo our dinner party judges? I'm guessing based on what they've eaten so far, to make everyone happy at the end of the meal, you yeah. probably need about 25 pieces of each dessert per person. <laughs> and then everyone will be full. And, as if on cue... Dessert time. There's a little story with the cakes. I read about this thing called king and queen cakes. You hide a bean inside the cake. Okay. And if you find it, you are dubbed king or queen for that evening. Oh. All right. No. I got a bean. You got a bean? What does that mean you're a queen? Oh, no, I've got a bean. <laughs> If I would have found a pork you know, chop in mine, I would have been a lot happier. <laughs> <laughs> to accompany that, there is a dessert buffet, shall we call it? Anne's Victorian Mini cakes. everything. Mini everything. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Lovely. Ryan and Anne have really good desserts. Mm. Yeah. Really good desserts. Oh, great desserts. Anne offers a parting gift. Maybe it's that pork chop. So it's a couple of the saffron pistachio cookies nice. that you had? Oh, no, it's not. It's actually loose leaf tea inside. So okay. this one is actually a British tea party tea. Can I just say, it wasn't a British tea party. And we need to keep coming back. This is called Dinner Party War. Okay. And with time to spare, Anne and Ryan's tea party is over. Great to have you so much. Thank you, it was wonderful. It was great. Now, for the judging. Welcome to our final judgments. Everybody has worked hard, you've cooked hard, you've presented hard, but only one couple can take away $1,000 worth of cookware and also the bragging rights to say, I am dinner party war champion. Our first couple. Marsha and Brian. Let's find out then what your guests thought of your party. It's a bit odd that they're not talking to us. It has gone on a fair length of time with only one glass of wine. You don't make somebody pray at a dinner table. Would you like a response? So yeah. That's what takes place in our home. Yeah. Your appetizer, that shrimp salad with the mango, very simple, very tasty. We both loved it. Mm. You did forget something, though. You ran out of time, and you didn't serve the veal chop. It was on the menu, but there was no veal. Luckily, you were serving 
mass amounts of halibut. And it was cooked perfect. It really was. So I'm gonna give you a six out of 10 on food. You had thought about everything. I loved your butterflies. I loved the way that you had created color on your table. It was absolutely beautiful. I love the gifts that you gave everybody. You really did put your yourself into that. Then when your guests came to the house, you were so busy, they didn't experience you. For that, I'm going to give you eight out of 10 for my score. And if you put that together with Corbin's score, you get 14 out of 20. Thank you. All right, then our second couple. Michael and Sue. To assume that everybody drinks is a little bit of a push did start me at a little bit uncomfortable. A little bit turned off by the spit bucket. I think those are all things that we knew we would hear. Now I have to say, you had the best main course. That Alaskan black cod. You had a moment. It was, I had a moment, it was delicious. Yeah. You kind of got caught up in the fanciness of the presentation and you spent a lot of time. In fact, I was just saying, serve the food. I'm gonna give you a seven out of 10. I like the fact that you did the wine tasting because of course wine is your thing and you know a lot about wine. However, I don't think you considered your guests who don't drink wine and didn't have an earthly chance of winning that competition. And we have to mark you down for running out of time. So I am going to give you six out of 10. So that gives you a grand total of 13. So Sue and Michael are out of the running by one point our final couple. Okay, Ryan and Anne. It doesn't seem like they're willing to feed us tonight. If we've had a main, I'm terribly upset. People are hungry, they want food, and so they're a little bit less energetic as a result. Some very honest comments. Yeah, yeah. and we, we... And some very hungry people. The tea sandwiches. I gave you a very important tip mm -hmm. about the bread. A tip that didn't really seem to register with either one of you. And as a result, your tea sandwiches were, how do I say, a little crispy. Crunch. A little extra crispy. Yeah. Good attempt, I wanted more meat. I'd get a little piece on top of that dry toast. I wanted the meat. Out of 10, on food is five. Presentation. You tried to put a spin on a very traditional meal, which is afternoon tea. The fact is, this isn't Tea Party Wars, it's Dinner Party Wars. For the fact that it wasn't a dinner party, I've had to mark you at six out of 10. So if you add that to Corbin's score, you have 11 out of 20. Which means that the overall winner of Dinner Party Wars is... <laughs> That's it for this episode. Join us next time when three more teams battle it out on Dinner Party Wars. The way I figure it, if my girlfriend's desserts can get the executive chef of Holt Renfrew's Cafe's mouth watering, that's already a victory. If there's a consolation round, we'll be back. No. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> God, I can't believe we did it. I'm really excited. I worked my butt off and I'm really, really excited that we won.